For more on the billionaire space race, we bring in ABC News contributor and former Marine Corps fighter pilot Steve Ganyard. Thanks so much for coming on the show, Steve. Thanks, Lizzie. So let's get a reality check. Richard Branson flew to the edge of space and in a launch scheduled for next week, Jeff Bezos plans to fly above the so-called Kármán line. Are there meaningful differences between these two flights? Not really. Uh, the Kármán line is actually fairly arbitrary. It was something that the U.S. and Soviet governments agreed on long ago, and it's 100 kilometers. So 100 is a nice even number. That's a good enough number to define what's space and what's in the atmosphere. So it's really at this point about bragging rights and, and whether Bezos is going to have bragging rights about being able to exceed the Kármán line, which is just a few miles beyond where Branson went. But it's important to understand that these are businesses and that Bezos and, uh, and Branson are looking to create businesses with this space tourism. Uh, it's not cheap. Uh, it, if you look at uh, the uh, Virgin Galactic uh, stock over the past year, it's up about 70% because people think that this is going to be a business. But that business is going to have to uh, take people on board at about three to $400,000 if you look at the, at, the, uh, at the stock filings that they put in, not two hundred fifty. dollars So they're going to have to find a lot of people at three to $400,000 who have nothing better to do with that money to <laughs> Uh, support this business. And, and explain why it's really Elon Musk and SpaceX, not Branson and Bezos, that have already changed space exploration. Yeah, so so the, the, the key here is that, that Bezos and Branson are sort of fighting for this idea of, a, of an e-ticket ride for rich people. Uh, it's not like it's moving forward with the science. And, you know, they're, they're doing things really that the U.S. government was doing in the 1950s and 60s. So they're not really pushing the envelope on science. What Elon Musk has done is to, uh, to create this new Starship rocket and the Falcon 9 rockets that he's doing now to have a very reliable way to get things into space very cheaply. And that is going to be critical for the aspirations that, that Musk and Bezos and, and the U.S. government, really all of the humanity has, to get to the moon, to get to Mars, and to be able to do it in, a, in, a, in an economical way. Um, if you look back at, say, the space shuttle days, it took about $25,000 to put one pound into orbit. Now, with the Starship that Elon Musk has developed, it'll be down around $700. So we can do things in space where we can, we can, uh, we can make fabrication in space. We can build colonies on the moon. We can take it uh, into space and do things like new medicines and new materials. So this, this idea of the space tourism, it's nice, it's fun, it's interesting to watch, but it's not advancing the space, uh, uh, it's science, and it's not advancing really the interest of humanity the way Elon Musk is. And bringing the story back to Earth, who exactly benefits from space tourism in the years ahead? I mean, as you said, it's not even just that these tickets are $250,000 a pop. We're really talking about more than three or 400000 So will it just be multi-billionaires? I, I, it will be it will be Bezos and it'll be and it'll be um, uh, Branson who look to make a business out of this. But it's always good when people see things where they, it's and they and they aspire. Hey, I'd like to go to space. That looks really interesting. They learn more about space and why space is important. So I think in the long run, it's not to look down on these billionaires because they're spending a whole bunch of money out of their pocket. And the real goal here for Elon Musk is to get to Mars and for Jeff Bezos to get to the moon. And they're spending billions of dollars out of their own pocket, and they're successful in the ways that the U.S. government never has been in terms of bringing down costs. So yes, this is a bit of a billionaire's plaything, but at the end of the day, it's going to be something that's very, very important for all of humanity and moving us into space and being able to do things that we've never been able to do before. Stephen Ganyard, we thank you so much for your insight and your time tonight. Thanks, Lindsay. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.